Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Hannah. I'm here to talk to you about my March TBR. So in March, I've actually got loads of different things going on. I'm having um, minor surgery or minor-ish surgery um, that obviously I'm nervous about with COVID, with my general health. Um, and that's on the 10th of March. So I am going to pre-record some content for you guys, but it also means I'm not really sure where my reading is going to be. Um, I'm having surgery below my belly button so I think that reading might be quite uncomfortable so I might be reading a lot more on my iPad which means maybe I won't get to these physical books but I wanted to share the books I'm hoping to read at some point in March um you guys know these are always possibility piles as opposed to like strict TBR lists for me um so yeah I thought I would just put that out there that maybe this maybe this month I won't read many of these which is also fine but I would like to share my excitement for them anyway so there are two books that have rolled over from Feb February, Feb February, that's a hard word to say. Um, the first one is Asylum Road by Olivia Sujek. I was kindly sent this from Bloomsbury and I have been really excited to get to it. I just felt like I was reading quite a few of the same sort of young female protagonist storylines and I wanted a bit of a break before I picked up something else. So I probably will pick this up towards the end of March if I do. Um, and you can go and watch my previous TBR to find out what it's about, but it's a road trip to the south of France. Then I also mentioned in there Chauveau Feminism, Sex, Power and Me Too by Sam Mills. Since um, putting this up, I've seen some really excellent reviews of it, so I am looking forward to getting to this one. It's just a extended essay, it's only 150 pages, all about um, the Me Too era and sort of like faux feminist men so yeah i will also get to that but yeah more chats on those in my february video so the other books i'm excited to read the first one is a proof i was sent by bloomsbury i featured this quickly in a vlog um the last vlog that just went up it's a still life by josie george so i was first made aware of this on my i put it in my books on your radar video which um the first one i did back at the start of the year and I had earmarked it because it's a memoir of chronic illness written by an own voices author so of course I was interested in that. I am collating a collection of books about Spoonie Life that I want to make a recommendation video on that I might like collaborate um, or like I can't think of the word <laughs> put together with my um, story and like how I got sick and that sort of thing and people are interested in that content um, but I want to read a wider range of books before I put together that um, that uh, recommendations for you so um i know my friend nicole over at books from bed is also working on so when she does i will so flag that to you guys as well um so this says since early childhood josie george has lived with a d d disabling chronic illness her days are watchful and solitary lived uh, out in the same 100 so meters around her home her world is surprising intricate and dynamic she's learned what to look for this is a book that looks at sickness and pain with no end or resolution that must be met with an ever-growing courage and ingenuity against a world which values progress and productivity above all else josie sets up sets out a quietly radical alternative value and treasure life for life itself great and small miracles so i'm so excited to read this particularly it's um the inference there about productivity culture and how uh, being chronically ill or living with disability can make you feel inferior to the to able-bodied people in the, in a community where productivity your career path and all those things that seem like they're valued above your personhood so i really hope that she delves into that deeply so i will link that down below she's also on instagram and twitter as porridge brain and i love um the stuff she puts out there so i hopefully will read this after my um operation i feel like i'll be very soothed by reading something like that and then the only other proof I'm hoping to read, is it the only other proof? I think so, is um, Havana Year Zero by Carla Suarez. I think I featured this in a video before. Tell me if I'm wrong. My brain fog is at peak right now, which you're probably bored of me saying. But this is translated from the Spanish by Christina Max Sweeney, and it is set in Cuba and it's talking about 1993 Cuba at the height of the special period a widespread economic crisis following the collapse of the Soviet bloc I mentioned in my intentions for 2021 I wanted to read more translated from the Spanish and I wanted to read more in Central and South America so this hits that off for me it was sent kindly by um, Charco Press um, which are a cool indie publisher another one of my aims and it's about a uh, maths lecturer, which I think will be really interesting as well. I like reading about semi-academic settings like in real life and Transcendent Kingdom. I find that tone um, 
really interesting when it's contrasted with other experiences in the book so yeah looking forward to getting that one I think it's a bit of a mystery a bit of a philosoph philosophy of lifestyle thing so yeah that would be good okay then two books I've picked out specifically specifically for post surgery the first one is a collection of short stories I bought this ages ago and I was so excited about it and I don't know why I haven't picked it up since I'm sorry absolutely beautiful cover like I love those banana leaves so much um, and this is also published by an indie press called the feminist press and it's arid dreams and it's a translated from the Thai I believe and it's all about working class um, people living in Thailand and like everyday mundane stories we know they're my jam made a whole video on them and it looks at the ordinary working class characters that aspire for more but are suspended in their routine a politician's wife imagines her life if her husband's accident was fatal a man on death row asks him to clear up misunderstanding with a sex worker and an elevator attendant feels himself wasting away at his station so yeah that sounds like a, a wild ride I've got an autographed copy pretty cool but I wanted to uh, I thought this would be good because I like short stories when I'm not feeling well because of the like shortness of the narrative I don't I can just like pick it up and read one and then I can rest and I don't feel like I'm losing my train of thought all the time so that was my thinking behind putting this on this I thought say this year's TBR, <laughs> this month's TBR. So that is Arid Dreams. Then the other one I picked out specifically for post-surgery is The Glorious Heresies by Lisa McNeary. You would have seen me talk about this if you watched my big book cool of the year video and my friend Daniel here on booktube, um, Guilty Feet, I'll link his channel up there. He is so, so funny. Um, he commented and said it was really excellent and that I would probably like it and it's a Irish crime family mystery sort of thing so it says unmistakably the real deal by Kevin Barry who's a famed Irish writer Maureen didn't mean to kill a man but what can a poor dear do when she was surprised by an intruder and only had a holy stone to hand lucky that she's reconnected with her estranged son Jimmy because as the most feared gangster in Cork he sure has the tools to sort out this mess Jimmy and this is boy buddy Tony with six kids and a love of the bottle could certainly do with the money and um, this sort of reminds me me and Tom watched a film a couple of nights ago I want to say no maybe like last week called Car with Horses this is the cover on Netflix which is probably one of the most harrowing things I've ever had to watch in my life but it just reminded me of that setting because it's about rural Ireland and it's actually based off another short story collection by um, Colin Barrett called Young Skins which I love that book and um it, the screenplay was written like on the basis of that short story in there and it's about a crime family that sort of take in um a ex-boxer and use him like as their muscle basically and but there's also a storyline with a child who has um autism or global delay and sort of like the custody battle and that was a bit i found really harrowing but um yeah it reminded me of that like sort of irish crime organized crime family situations I find really interesting so yeah I think that would be like pacey enough to keep me going and maybe not like super philosophical that I have to think about it loads when I'm um not feeling so good okay and then I wanted to mention a couple of books I got um on the library audio app I'm a huge borrow box advocate if you guys have borrow box in your country it is a free service from your library where you can listen to audiobooks I'm planning a video on audiobooks because they are my um, book of choice a lot of the time when I'm not very well. So I have reserved Brown Baby, which is the memoir by Nikesh Shukla. I watched an amazing interview with Nikesh Shukla and Musa Okwonga, both talking about the releases of their books. I've already read, wet, wet, read Musa's book, but I knew that I wanted to listen to Nikesh's on audio because I love memoir and audio and I feel like it'll be really interesting. And it's about him raising his children as a British South Asian person his upbringing, his, the way he's bringing up his children, the differences, and I think it was going to be fantastic. I love Nikesh Shula and what he did with The Good Immigrant and now with The Good Literary Agency. So I'm really looking forward to that one. I think my reserve comes in um, at the start of next week, which is really exciting. And then I'm going to pick up another graphic memoir. If you watched my wrap up, you would have seen I had bad luck with the graphic novel last month, but that hasn't put me off because I was really enjoying them up until that point. And I found on Scribd Arab of the Future, which is there's three in the trilogy in a similar way to Persephilis, um, which I read at the start of the year and adored. This is a one person story explaining sort of like the political cultural history. 
so I'm really really looking forward to reading those and I think graphic memoir will be perfect so I can prop it up on my iPad and I can lie like this and flick across the screen um so yeah I'm really looking forward to that one so yeah I this is a lot of books but also like I don't know if I'm gonna read all of them we'll just have to see how the month goes I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to vlog that much but hopefully there will be some videos going up for you guys so I hope you liked watching what I'm going to read in March please leave down below if you've read any of these if you want to read any of these and of course what you're going to read in March I love to see what other people are reading so thank you so much for watching I'd love it if you stuck around and subscribed and I'll see you next time for another video bye